All right, now that we have the account class complete, we're gonna go back to our main class and we're gonna instantiate the objects. And what that means is we are going to create the objects. And all an object is in programming is it's a data that has a storage location. It's, it's just, that's all it is. It's data with a, that's stored in a certain area and that can be pulled or called if need be. So in order to create an object within a class, the first thing that you do, let me comment this out real quick. All right, so this is what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna instantiate objects. And to do that, you type the class name, you create an object, Similar to when we did the scanner objects, we did scanner and then we named it keyboard and then set it to a new instance of the scanner class. The same exact thing is what we do when we call other classes and create objects. So we have the account since that's the name of this and we name it. We'll just call it account one since we're making bank accounts and use the equal sign and you set it to a new and this is what this is is it's creating a new object within the account class and then we have the parentheses here and the semicolon now within the parentheses is your that's your arguments and that's what you're passing in and since we're creating an account we're going to pass in the information in order to create that account. And if we look back at our account class, it was a string, uh, which is the initial name, an integer for the ID, and then a double for our balance. So let's pass those in. Now how you pass those in is just put, like, so this is gonna be a string. So you literally just type it in. You don't need to put in what type it is because within the class, it knows what types. You just type it in parent or in the quotations that whatever your string is. And then to, since we have three variables going in, you separate them with a comma. So you'd put comma. Now this one is gonna be for the account number. It's an integer, which means it's just a bunch of numbers whole number that is and then separate it with a comma and now we have the balance that we're putting in so let's just put 1500 and remember that's a double so what we have here is an object that we created within the account class now this object will have these values set to them now if I run this which I just clicked run and you'll see that nothing actually happened but what happened was this program actually created an object with these values and to show you that what I'm gonna do is output and I'm, what I'm gonna do is output the get balance so we go to the account class we'll see our method right here and it's get balance now you can guess that what this method does is it gets the balance it returns balance right here and I'll explain that in a later video exactly what that means all of this but just to show you how to use it so since we created an object here in order to call a method with that within that class, within that object, you type in the object name and then you press dot. Now after you press dot, you'll see a whole long list of different methods that you can call. And you'll see that get balance is right here. So you can either click on it and it'll set it for you, or you can type it. So get balance. And then you'll see we have 
the parentheses, but we're not going to put anything in the parentheses because we're not sending any value. Now if I run this, you'll notice that it says 1500 right there. So what that did was output whatever was in here. And what was in here was the object and we called the get balance method, which is down here. And likewise, so it returned 1500. So if we put 2500 and run the same thing, you'll get 2500. And same thing, you can have it get name, get account number, you can have as many methods as you want to. And they all have different meanings, they all return different things. But I wanted to keep this as simple as possible and just show you how to create a new class and then create objects within a class. In the further videos, the, the upcoming videos that I'm going to be doing, it'll be more focused in on certain parts of it. And I'll be able to show you new methods and different things that have to do with this. So just a quick rundown one more time on what happened here. So we have our main class right here. And we instantiated objects. One to be specific. <laughs> so we called our account class, which is this one. We created an object and named it account one. And then we passed in values to it. Now what that did when it ran this line is it accessed this class and then the first thing it did once it got to this class it went down and then found the constructor. And remember that the constructor automatically runs within a class. It doesn't need to be called, it automatically runs when this class is accessed. So once I called the account class right here and created this object and passed Jack Smith all these numbers and then this value we ran the constructor with those values right there we had Jack Smith all those numbers and then the money value which was 2500 so within this constructor we had to do three things is set name, which is this variable that we, our instance variable, to initial name, which is what we passed in. It set account number, which is right here, to what we passed in, which is initial ID. And then it set the balance to what we passed in, which was initial balance. Now you'll, you'll say like, these values, because remember I said this is a cookie cutter approach, this whole thing, what it does is, is it creates an account. That's all it does. It, this doesn't actually hold any vital information at all. It just creates the account, creates the object. Once the object's created, it's done with this class. So we have the object. And remember, object is just, a, it's just data stored in a location. That's all it is. It's like physical data like stored in a location. So once the constructor is ran with the information, what it does is it stores the information that we gave it, the values, to that object. It doesn't store it anywhere else but to that object. So object one, or um, account one, literally takes the values of everything that you sent in, stores it in a location, and then those values are gone. Like, like these don't have any values at that point. None of these have values after it's used. And that's why this, this class is just used to literally create different objects over and over and over. That's what this is used for. Because look, I can also account, let's do this, let's copy and paste that. One of these days, there we go. Okay, so account two. We'll just name this Jill. Give her a different number. And 5,500. So 
what we're doing here is creating another object. And same thing, we'll copy this system.out.println and we will print out account number two. See, this object is different than this object. So now we have two objects created within this account class. We'll run this again and you'll see that we have 2500 and 5500. So now we created two objects. So I hope that makes sense. I know it's a little bit drawn on, but I wanted to kind of clarify the different parts of it and really help explain what the instance variables are, what the constructor is, and how this is all tying together. And like I said, I'll have more videos to make it more clear. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next tutorial.